Hi, my name is Jeff Rhodes, and this is another video on Microsoft 365 uh, based on my book, Creating Business Applications with Office 365. So let's get started. Uh, what I wanted to show you today was really an example that's come up recently on how to do scoring. So in the, let me show you the, the list, but the, the old process was a bunch of spreadsheets, say each one in a different group, and we've got some panels and then boards within the panels and you know each one's got a score sheet and then somebody's got to integrate those and maybe do some reporting so I wanted to see if there's a way that we can can use SharePoint as a list uh, the data source and then do a scoring sheet for the panelists where a facilitator will come in and and um, you know have the, a, a meeting with the panelist and enter the scores and then they write there so if you kind of see we've got a nominee that's plain text i've got a panelist which is uh the actual person column a panel number a board number and then what we want the app to fill in is a rating one a rating two we'll see programmatically we do a uh, an average rating and then some comments and then the idea the reason to do this is that we then have a Power BI, which I won't show in this video, which will show the ratings. And there's some other information about that in the real one we'd add, like, you know, what organization they're from and things like that. And also can do that calculation. And one more requirement, we want to make a screen capture of kind of the results and then we can paste it into the into the team's meeting chat and get some uh, no, verification that everybody agrees with the scores for for auditing purposes. The other advantage of doing it this way is let's say we need to move somebody from one panel to another where we can just change this panel number and board number and everything will address instead of having to go to all these different spreadsheets and edit them. So it'll take a little bit of time to write all this but one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to show cascading drop down boxes so we first pick the panel and then we only show boards that within the panel we're going to show how we can get the list of then all the matching nominees and then show all three panelists at the same time so we can enter their scores directly save it back to this list and then also have a, a summary that we can make that screen capture so all right let's get started so we're going to come over and uh, go to apps and we'll say new app canvas and we'll just call it video Scoring, make it a tablet. And we can skip that. We'll leave it screen one for now. Let's make this a little smaller over here. All right, so let's go ahead and start with just a, a label. And we'll call this panel that. Make that a little smaller, maybe a hundred. And then we'll uh, do our first drop down. We'll put that in the right spot. Make this a little bit bigger. And uh, I like to make that a little less wide as well. Let's make this like 200. And then I'll do the items in a minute. So let's go over to data and let's go link to our SharePoint list. So I'll just type in SharePoint. Select that. It's in my samples. So I've got a bunch of these. You've probably seen a lot of these videos. But let's go to scoring and connect. So now we can go back over here. What we want to do for the panel is for the items is we want distinct so that's the thing is we since we have multiple boards so we're just going to use the distinct function we're going to use this a lot today and so it gives us the source which is just our list and then we're going to say what do we want to be there and i've got a panel number so if i run this i should see one and two those are the two that i've done the data for so far so so far so good Let's rename this one, so we call it the panel box. We're going to use that a lot, so we need to have it a good name. Let's copy both of these, move them 
that way and we'll call this one the board. So I don't need the space and I'll call this one the board box. And this one now is where we're going to do our cascading. So let's go ahead and, and work it from the inside. So first thing we want to do is we want to do filter. So we want to filter our source, which is scoring. And we want to filter it so that the panel number equals our panel box dot selected dot result. And we kind of see if we look the, you know, that's got the records right there. So you can see at least that's the overall. And then after we filter it, it'll, it'll uh, limit that down. So that part's good. And now what we want to do, see these are all the board number. See, we have one and two, but we don't want to, we don't want to show it once. So this is actually the filtered one because there's a board one and a board two that goes with the current selected one, which is panel one. And so what we want to do is now do that distinct again. So we can just say distinct, use that whole bit as the uh, source. And then the expression, what we want to grab is the board number. And then we want to again use dot result like that. And it's that distinct that gives us result instead of value, which is, can be a little bit odd. So notice we can see it. It's one and two there. Or we can, oops, sure I'm not pulling that up right. Oops, get back to that. There we go. Now let's run it. I'm not sure why I'm getting that. So I've got one and two. If I change it to panel two, there's only one board in my list. So that seems to be working right. So, so far, so good. Now it seems like I've fixed that. So let's do this. Let's copy our, uh, our label just so they're all the same size. And let's call this nominee. And here what we want is a combo box. I really like to use drop down instead. I'm making myself a little more space here. But only the combo box works very well with people, the person column. So that's why we're doing combo box. It's just got a lot more settings. And we'll turn it so that you can't do multiple selections and that you can't search for it. So it'll be basically the same. So we say combo box here. And I'll, I'll set my own source, so I won't do anything yet with that. I'll make that a little, let's do like 250. I should just say 200 again. That'll be fine. And I forgot to, yeah, I renamed that. So this one I'll call the nominee box. There we go. And what we want here, I'll move it over a little bit. I shall make that a little wider. Let's make it 250. Give ourselves some space. And what I want to do is, again, I want to work from the inside. So let's do a filter. And it's going to be kind of like the one we did before. But we just got one more thing. So we're going to say, I could have copied, but we'll just say panel number equals panel box dot selected dot result and board number equals board box dot selected dot result. So that'll be the first one. You can see we've got them limited. Now notice what our what our nominee or our panelist looks like. You know, it's a record on its own. So we'll have to deal with that. That's a person column. So we'll have to get the display name in the end out of that. But let's then do the distinct. Okay, just like we did before. That's the whole, let's give ourselves a little more room here. And we're gonna grab the nominee 
And then normally we would say display name, but because that just stinked, it'll, it'll say dot result. But we'll see that it will actually grab us the display name. See, it's got Sylvester and Granny right now for ours. Oh, and actually that's right, because these are not peep, people call them. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. These are the panelists are the people. This is just plain text. So that's actually how we would expect it. So we got Sylvester and Gran Granny. If we come over here, we got board one. I take that out. We got Bugs Bunny and Yosemite Sam. And if we go over here, we got Daffy Duck and Elmer Fudd. So we're doing all right there. Let's go back and and set some values for that though. So we come over to advanced. Shows our all our stuff there, but I want to change this to true so they can't select more than one person and I don't want them to be able to search either let's see is searchable is already false so that's how we want it to be so while I'm here I'm eventually going to want to do the display uh, to see the ratings we call it so I might as well draw that button and we'll deal with it later We'll come over here. Whoops. I want to change the size of that. So we'll put that over here. Can myself see if I can make this a little smaller? No, not really right now. So we'll call this uh, board ratings like that. Maybe push that over a little bit. And we'll call it the uh, view ratings button. All right, so we've done kind of our main set of things now. So our, our the, the next thing that we want to do is kind of deal with what are we going to do to, to be able to add our multiple panelists so they can come through. And to do that, we've got to do some manipulation of our data. Yeah, so I... Stop and kind of change my zoom a little bit so we can see a little better. But now we're ready to do work on what we do to kind of get our hands on the right panelists and so forth. So let's go to the on select here and we're going to want to do some calculations and stuff. So the first thing we want to do is clear collect. So we want to clear a collection and then make a new one. And we're going to call this call selected panel records and what we want to do is so like we saw before the filter and because of that let me go grab the filter for this other one so let's come over here whoops yeah let's go back to the items for a minute and grab that because they're pretty similar so let's just grab this bit so we grab all of that like that Let's go back to the on select. We'll throw that in there. So that's part of it. But we also want to grab the nominee. So we'll say and nominee equals nominee box. And then we mean one more parentheses. So I like to do that format text, and now we know that's right. So that's our first one. This will give us all the, the records for the ones that we've selected, the panel, the board, and then the nominee. And then what we've got to do is, is get our uh, hands on the individual rows. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to set some variables. I just want to get the var, the num items. It can be a little difficult to work with these collections, as you'll see. So first, we got to know how many rows there are. It's supposed to be three, but we don't want it to break if somebody makes a mistake. So we're going to just grab that same thing, and it'll give us how many. Oops, I need to close the parentheses there. All right, so now I've got a variable, how many records. Then I need to just do a little bit of logic. So I'm going to say if 
r non items is greater than zero, so we have at least one record. Well, then I'm going to set a variable for the row. So I'm going to call it the var rating row one. And how do I get our hands on it? Well, that's the first in our collection. So that one's easy. The rest of them are a little more difficult. I need one more column, I think. Yeah, there we go. So I got my first. It's a little trickier on how to get the, the second one. But we're going to use the second and the third just with the same technique. So you got to kind of play around with it a little bit. But let's copy this. And we'll say, okay, if the num items is greater than one, then I'm going to set row two. And what I'm going to do is change this to the first in. Because we can't just go right to the second record. But I can tell it to grab the in records, which is two. And then I get the last of those. So that's a little bit of insight. You can kind of look there. So that will get us, if we have at least more than one record, so we have at least two, we'll set that. And it's working so far. So let's grab one more. I'm kind of guess what I'm going to do too. I could do the last, but the problem with the last is that if I did have a mistake and get four, well, then I end up skipping three and I'm on four. So I'm going to say var num items greater than two, change this to three, and take the last one and get to all three of those like that. All right, so that should... Take care of that. Let's just run it so that we can. Let's, yeah, let's go check with board one and we'll go to Yosemite. Oh, actually, I didn't mean to do board ratings. I didn't need to click that. But yeah, now I've set that, those variables so that I can work with them. So, what I want to do next. Well, first thing I want to do, I'll use this a lot, but let's go mess with that board ratings button so what we want that is we really don't want that showing up initially so let's go ahead and just use our new variable to get rid of it so if the uh, those variables are blank then we don't want this to show because they haven't selected any nominees yet so we can say is blank and we could we'll just pick one of them so we'll just say var row rating row one so that'll be true if the uh, you know if that hasn't been done, but we want that to be the opposite. So we only want it to be visible when that's not blank. So we just put the not in front of them. And so while we're at it, we should really default so that if we start over, it doesn't have that valuable uh, valuable anymore. So we can say on start. Let's go ahead and set that. So we'll set var. Rating row one, and we have this blank function, which is kind of nice. So we can just do that. Oops, there should be semicolon. Row two. I should have copied that, but I'll copy it for the last one. go so now what I can do is I can say run on start see how that went away and we can get it back so all right so let's go ahead and and work with our panelists so we're gonna come in I'm gonna make some labels and then I'm gonna group them together so let's just give this one a little bit wider let's do about 200 here Actually more like 300 there we go. And I'm going to just set this to be the value of the, of the panel. So I'll say, okay, this is panelist one. Use my concatenation operator, and I'm just going to use that 
that variable. So rating row one dot, and this is where I was getting out where we get the uh, panelist. And then I need the display name. So let's try that. Maybe I still need that a little bit wider. Let's try 400. Let me make it a, maybe a little wide. We'll have to get three of them across. But notice this. If I do this, if I now pick somebody, oh, okay, it got me that was one of the panelists. And then I need to set the, the ratings. So let's just copy a couple of these. Let's copy and paste that. And that'll be rating one. And then I want to text input. But I only need I don't need it very wide, so we'll do like 50 here. Maybe I'll do 75, give it a little more space. I'm gonna make this no default text. I'm gonna make it a number. And I could do some some validation and stuff. You'll see I'll at least make sure they're not blank below. And I need to name this. And we gotta keep these straight. So I'm gonna call it panelist one rating one. Oh, and then the default will be that bar rating row one dot rating one. There we go. So we'll be able to edit it as well. So let's take that, paste it. This will be rating two. This will be panelist two rating. Or no, sorry, that part was right. Panelist one, rating two, and then the default will be rating two. And let's do one more of that. Call this comments. Make a little wider. And I'll do a text input for that one, a little bit wider, like that. Get rid of the, well, the default, actually, we can do it here if we wanted to. Actually, I'll, I'll set it up above here so it get a little better IntelliSense. Dot comments. Now we need to make sure this is uh, multi-line. I set this as plain text back in SharePoint, so I don't need to, so I can do a regular text control and not do the, the rich text control. So let's move that up a little bit, something like that. And then let's make sure we name it. Uh, comment. Another thing I like to do just to make it kind of nice, let's do another label and just get a little divider here. So we can do something, something like that. Get rid of the text. Go over here and go to the fill, make it something like that. So, and then what would be nice would be to, to group these. Let's make that so that it matches something like that. We can group, and we'll just call it uh, panelist one group. While we're at it, let's set the visible to that, and we'll just say, like we did before on the other one, is blank bar rating row one. So we're going to need an initial indication uh, that it's, uh, and we'll put the not in front of it. So if they don't 
if the minute that they come in, that will show up, but, but it won't be there, you know, blank with no values and stuff till they pick somebody. So let's do that. Let's copy and paste. We can line this up something like that. And then what we have to do now is just start renaming stuff. So we'll do the group first. We'll call it panelist. To group. Well, we got it. Might as well set the visible at the same time. That'll be rating row two. Change this to panelist two. Rating row two. See why I set those variables. Rating row two. And I got to rename it as well so that we can figure out which is which. Catalyst two rating one. Go to that one. Catalyst two rating two, and we'll set the default. There we go. Do the same for the comments. All right, so far so good. Let's copy that. We got selected. Do it one more time. There we go. Notice here we don't really need that divider. That was really kind of intended to be in the middles there, but we can rename the group. Three, rating row three, you get the deal, so feel free to fast forward for a minute, but it won't take me too long. Main thing you gotta watch, if you forget to do one of these, you'll be right into the wrong row. So that's a hassle, so definitely worth checking it over again. over here and then let's look at the overall group I don't think I set the visible yet it should be three as well all right so let's try it kind of come over both of these have the same value, but they said notice it's got the different people and the three. So we'll we'll check that out. Let's let's do it. I like to do an error label so we can go ahead and do that as well. Let's kind of combine that. Let's insert. I'll put it right here and make it kind of big. Something about like that. And we'll say, please enter. Rating one and a rating two for each panelist. I'll make that red, make it bold. There we go. And then we'll do a, well, I like to, hold on, let's make that, let's make sure we name that. I like to name that error label. And then we want to set it's visible. And this one gets a little bit complicated because what we want to do is let's just do the first, uh, the very first uh, row, so the first panelist. So we want that same as blank. So if that's blank, we want this actually not to be visible. 
Okay, so in other words, when, when we haven't selected anything, we don't want to say select a rating or whatever. So that's okay, and it's gone away for now. But then we want to combine, so put that in. We're actually going to do a not on that, so we'll see in a minute. But we also want to do an and on that, so with our rating boxes. And I'm just going to check that it's blank, like I said, with a a little more work, you could get the value of it, make sure it's in the valid range and that kind of stuff. So if that's blank or rating two, Yeah, so let's test that for a minute. So let's go run our on start. So, so far so good, because it's blank like we want. And notice it, I should really zero out that one. So the minute we do that, it shows up. And then I put something there, something there, it goes away. But really it shouldn't go away till the other ones are done too. So we'll come back to that. But that's our basic logic is okay. So now we can just copy that. And we want to do or in between because if any of them are meet the condition so that it should be showing, then we want it to be showing. So we'll just say that and we just change the, the ones to the two. You see why we went and renamed all those because this would be really difficult if we were doing text box one and having to figure out which one's text box one, text box two, and all that stuff. So we'll change this to three. There we go. So let's try it again. So now we need. And it goes away and then it comes back. So it looks like that's good. Those are actually, some of those are invalid values. We're trying to go between one and, and five, but uh, we'll test that in a minute. All right, so we're getting some progress. Let's go ahead and save the data now. So now that we've got a place to enter it all, we can save it. So let's insert another button. We'll go try to match it below this one and we'll just say, A ratings that call it the save ratings button one thing I need to do by the way I should have modeled that better so let's go ahead and save one thing that has happened to me I actually when I was getting ready for this video I was building my sample application and I inadvertently hit the back button on my mouse and I hadn't saved yet and I lost my work so I should have done that earlier but now we are got it saved because it will auto save, but only once you've saved it yourself once. So there we go. So what we want to do now on the on the uh, the save ratings is we want to patch. And normally we just patch one record at a time. But in this case, we want to patch all three of these records so that we write them all together. So let's uh, try that. It'll be on the on select, and that's where I like to use that error label so that's what if I rather than doing a bunch of testing I can just say if error label dot visible so if that's true that means that I'm not ready to save I don't have all my ratings so I'm just going to return false but if it is not visible then I can go ahead and patch and so then I'm still going to do another if because I want to make sure I have that uh, rating row so I can just say use that same not is blank because I'll get an error if I try to if this is not there if it doesn't have a value then I'm going to get an error I don't like that so now I'll go ahead and patch so I patch 
the data source, which is scoring. It looks like I've got my All right, so we can see scoring there, and what I want to do is just tell it which row, but I don't have to do a lookup or anything because I already know the name of the, the row. I've got it as a variable, so I'll just pick bar rating row 1. And what I've got to do is write, it's pretty simple in this case, rating 1. Oops. And that's going to be the value. I got to do the value so it converts it to a number. So that'll be panelist one rating one dot text like that. I might as well copy that so that I can do number two. And I'll paste it again. This will be comment. I don't need the, the uh, value. So I'll just say panelist one comments dot text. And I think this is supposed to be comments. There we go. Now, to get the right number of parentheses, I think it's two after that. It's like three. Okay, so to do that, see if it all comes through. So that's good. Now we basically just copy this and do it for the others. So I'll just change the one to two. There we go, one more. Change the one to three. All right, and the last thing I like to do is just give them some notification that it worked. So I'm again gonna check the error label. But if it's true, so it's, you know, we've done all that and it's not showing, I'll just say I'm going to notify and I'm just going to say this information has been saved like that. And then we can do a notify. It's a little hard to see off the bottom here, but we can say success right there. Do one more, again, format it so that it looks good. All right, so let's give it a shot. We'll test it. I'm just going to go back to Bugs Bunny here. It's just remembering my thing. So I'm going to just, for testing, I'll put one and two here, and I'll just say, analyze one comments. Here I'll do two and three, just so we can test that it went into the right spot, that we didn't make an error. So I'll plant panel is two comments, and then I'll make this four and five. And I'll say panelist three comments. And we're doing it for Bugs Bunny board, panel one, board one. So we hit save, kind of see that. It says it's been saved, so let's go over and look at SharePoint, so that's good. One, two, panelists one, two, three, panelists two, four, five, panelists three. So it doesn't look like we made any errors. So, so far so good, we're almost on the downhill side. So let's look at how we share, update the, or display the ratings. All right, 
So first thing we need to do, let's collapse that screen. So we're going to want a new screen. So we'll call it the display results screen. And we'll put some stuff on there for now, but for now all I want is, is a button to get back. And then we'll add, once we have our data, we'll add some stuff there. So let's just add this home button. Where did I go? There we go. So let's put it over here. And we'll just say navigate screen one, because I never renamed that. All right, so let's go back over here. So. What we got to do now is get some, some uh, collections, just like we did before. So we're going to want to, to grab all the data that we want. So actually, let's, uh, before I do that, let me go back to visible, because I'm going to need some of that same, well, not that. It was, uh, I guess it's there that I want to copy. Yeah, I want this. That was our filter. Actually, I'll copy all that, like, right there. Now, let's go back to on select. And let's do another collection. So we'll say clear collect, because we don't want to get rid of any previous one we had. I'll call it call panel ratings. And what we want to do is we don't just want one, we want to loop through. So that's and grab all the ones that match our criteria, you know, which is the, the board, the panel, and the nominee that we're selecting. So we say for all here. So I've done some other videos with for all. It can be a little complicated, but just think of it looping through. And then the first thing is the source. So that's where we're going to paste in that filter and probably just make it less confusing until we formulate. I'll just do it like that so we can see it. So I'm, that whole thing is our source. So I've selected, oh, and actually I don't quite, I don't need this one anymore because I actually want all the nominees. So I just want to get the people for the, the selected panel and the selected board. And then what I need to do on the for all is I need to put a formula that shows what I'm going to do with it. You know, how I'm going to add it to the collection. So here I basically just, you know, I'll put a thing, we just basically do our columns. So most of them are going to just be exactly the ones we have. So if for nominee, I want the nominee. For panelist, I just want the panelist. Rating one. I want rating one. So again, this on the left is whatever I want to call it, but I don't have a better name, so I'm just using the same one. And on the right is from my data source. So it comes from my SharePoint list column names. So I say rating two, rating two, and then the last one I'll do to, or I'll do some math. So I'll say average, oops, just to show you can do it, average rating, and now I'll do some math. Rating one plus rating two divided by two, and then I'll end with our comments. And I close my brackets. And then I got a couple parentheses. So let's format that so we can see it. So that's so far so good. And then what do I want to do? I just want to, after I'm done, I want to navigate. My display results. There we go. And I really need to run this so that I can see what it looks like and, and look at my collection and then build it. So I actually want to just hit here and I want to go ahead and just click that button. And then we'll just stay there. So let's go view 
the collection. So there's our call panel rating. So it's good. I got my ratings. I got my anomalies. Notice the panelist itself is a more complex one, but we'll get our hands on that. But it did the math with the average rating. And notice I haven't actually done Yosemite Sam yet. So that's why that's coming in as zero. So we'll, that's okay. We'll come in and fix that in a minute. So what we want to do here is we want to go ahead and display a data table. And we can now tell it which collections we want to do. So let's move this down, give ourselves some space. Something like that. We can say edit fields. We just add the ones we want. We're really going to want them all, but I want to, it will put it in the order I pick it. So we'll say the nom nominee, then the panelist, rating one, rating two, average rating, then comments. And so all that looked good, except let's see what it doesn't like. Yeah, it's already telling us this is not text. It's showing as object. So all we got to do is just hit dot, and then it gives me display name. So I could move the column widths around and stuff, but I won't take the time to do that. So that looks pretty good, but we don't have any data for Yosemite Sam. So let's go back to there. Let's go ahead and go to Yosemite Sam. Notice since I set the defaults, it, it doesn't associate it there. So I'll just give fives. I won't put any comments. I'll put four for these person and I'll put three. For those, I will save it. If I come refresh over here. Coming over, it's got five, four, three. I didn't put any comments, so that worked. I come over to my board ratings, and I've got it. So in our real application, we could make a screen capture that, paste it into our Teams chat, everybody kind of initial saying they agree with it, and we're done. We've now got our Power BI to do it. So kind of long video, but some definitely some moving parts there. I uh, hope it was enjoyable, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time.